Hey everybody, it's Brian from the Fiesta Movement. I thought I'd give you guys a point of view tour of the interior of the new 2014 Fiesta ST. Uh, first of all, we're sitting behind the driver's seat and as you can see, we have um, door handle and mirror controls, uh, rear window and front window up down, as well as window lock. Uh, of course, typical armrest. Most of this stuff here is exactly the same as it was for the, uh, the 2011 through 2013 Ford Fiestas. The only difference is this was silver um, on the previous generation cars and this was black. They flipped the two and it's something different. So headlight controls and fog lamps are mounted behind here. So it is automatic uh, turn full to the clockwise position, three o'clock position for automatic. Uh, then there is headlights parking lamps and off and then also um, if you pull out in parking lamp headlight or automatic that turns on your fog lamps so moving next to the uh, the steering wheel uh, it's typically pretty much the same basic format we had in the uh, 2011 through uh, 2013 cars uh, the only difference is the ST uh, this section here is slightly different it's not nearly as um, I guess thick or as rectangular it's more round uh, but otherwise, it's a very nice steering wheel, great position for your thumbs to fit, uh, which give you access to the thumb controls. Over on this side over here, we have your uh, My 4 Touch controls, which include uh, voice activation in the center, uh, next track or next preset over here is also um, phone hang up. This is, uh, let's see, going backwards a track or backwards a preset and phone pickup. Volume up, volume down. This is great because this was missing on the 2011 through uh, 2013 cars. So we're happy to have volume up, volume down back again. Um, back behind here, we have uh, the computer, trip computer movement. This cycling this back and forth will change the uh, menu on the screen, as well as this is where your uh, turn signals are. So in fact, let me, uh, I'm gonna turn the engine to the on position here using the push to start button. Here we go, as you can see my four touch starting up everything is going let's turn the fan down so we have uh turn signal control three to blink with one tap three blink the other way with just a single tap we have high beams is pulling straight back again and if you see i'm going to cycle the uh the trip button here and you'll see that the menu changes on the screen uh, looks like fuel economy is down a little bit i was screwing around uh with some high rpm runs trying to figure out what gear will give you what mile per hour so my fuel economy is down a little bit right now so you can see it's also really kind of warm outside so i usually go back to distance to empty so also uh what is missing is over on this side here used to be a button which was the voice command button the, that is now moved to the steering wheel so that pretty much covers the stock here and if you're familiar with uh, kind of the more european based Ford Compacts, uh, this setup with the stocks has pretty much uh, been the same, it's been untouched. So over on this side we have uh, all your wiper controls. Uh, push down one is uh, kind of a mist wipe and then cycling up goes through intermittent and then different speeds. Your in intermittent control uh, is this little knob here. Pressing in um, does your windshield washing and pulling back turns on the rear wiper and pulling back again uh, is rear wiper wash. So, looking ahead at the gauge cluster, uh, let's see, what do we have? We have the tachometer, one of the most commonly used uh, instruments in the car. On the left and on the right, we have the speedometer, which goes to 160 mile per hour uh, in the ST. And we have a fuel gauge mounted in the center. Nothing much really special there, kind of your typical layout uh, for the Ford Fiesta. Just the, um, the position of where red line is and your maximum speed is different on the ST. So moving over here, the center stack, my Ford Touch, lots of going, lots of stuff going on here. Uh, this is kind of the main screen, it's broken into the four quadrants. This is the current version, there's a new one that is coming out shortly, so I won't spend too much time on this, this is kind of changing dramatically, but uh, just a real quick. Uh, that's where your phone is, uh, keypad, got quick dial, phone book, history, got messaging, that's all based in here. To go back, hit the home button, back to home screen, entertainment, uh, we have all different types of presets here, AM, FM, Sirius, CD, USB, Bluetooth, audio, SD card line in. Once again, we'll go back to the home screen. Navigation is in the upper corner. 
Uh, once again, this is all it's all pretty much the same as any of the My 4 Touch systems. So you can go to almost any dealer and play around with the system, and you'll see the, the same type of thing. So there's your navigation screen. Um, in the menu is where the travel link is set up. So if you want to look at weather radar, uh, which is important uh, for me since I always want to know when I should be cleaning my car. Uh, let's take a quick look here. And there we go. So there's weather radar, it's, it's downloading it right now, but you get the idea. And then we go back to menu. Uh, this is the date, uh, kind of a wasted screen, could have been something cooler, such as a boost gauge or oil pressure, oil temp, or something useful, but instead you get the date. Down here you got a CD uh, slot, which has never been used in this car. I've never even used it in my 2011. Power button for the, uh, the radio control right here. Uh, eject button. Uh, source, if you don't want to go through the touchpad here or use the voice activated command, you can use the source button. Uh, round dial here changes between presets, tune up down, also does your volume control. Your lock button, lock unlock, when the vehicle is locked there's a little yellow light. Emergency flashers, there we go. And if your passenger airbag is on or off, uh, is illuminated right there. Uh, this menu here, the system here, is exactly the same as it was on the original Fiesta movement cars, which were from Europe. Uh, it has fan control here. It has temperature control over on this side, as well as a digital display that reads in Fahrenheit, unlike the original cars, which were in Celsius. Uh, AC on, AC off. Uh, the different types of uh, directional, where do you want it? You want uh, dash, you want defrost, max defrost, recirculatory air, off, and floor. Rear defrost, max AC. Pretty self-explanatory. If you set it to auto, uh, the computer will take care of everything for you. You can also use a voice command using My4 Touch to um, tell it what temperature to go to and it will do it. Since we're in Michigan, this is one of the more important buttons we have. Heated seats. Yes, these things heat up extremely fast. This is driver's heated seat, passenger heated seat. And if you are into changing the color of your lighting, I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but um, we have a number of different colors that you can choose from in the uh, Fiesta. This is the same as it's been through um, through the 2011 car as well, and that has changed uh, through this button here. Now, one of my favorite buttons, ECS off, a button that was desperately missing on my 2011 car and has been a, uh, a constant source of frustration. Uh, when the system is in its default, which is on, uh, in the stability control, traction control is on. You hit it once, a little yellow light pops up on the dash. Now you're in sport mode. A little bit more wheel slip, a little bit more yaw. You push and hold, and I don't know if it will do it without the engine running, but uh, it looks like it will not. Uh, you'll get a little message up on the screen. After five seconds, the system is fully deactivated, which means it is up to you and you only to control the vehicle. So um, on the track, uh, it's pretty much in sport mode. I don't quite have enough confidence to turn it fully off on a road course, uh, autocrossing I will go fully off, but on a road course I'll leave it in the sport position and on the street I leave it on, except for in the winter I will actually turn it off and use my new techniques I learned at Team O'Neill, such as left foot braking, to um, control the car. The e-brake handle located right here, same position as it was on the 2011 through 2013 car. We have a 12 volt source, right now I got two USB ports plugged in there, but normally that's just your typical cigarette lighter. Six-speed manual gearbox. Uh, it's in reverse right now. It's got a reverse lockout right here. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. We'll go back in a second. Pull up into reverse. So uh, quite a wonderful gearbox. It could be a little bit shorter throws, a little bit tighter on the on the feel of it. But for a factory um, shifter, I'm pretty happy with it. So I will be changing it to a short throw anyway because that's typically what I do. So moving over to the passenger side, I've got a nice little lighting system that's underneath here in this cavity, which is just kind of gives you some extra ambient lighting. Uh, glove box with owner's manuals located in there. Uh, passenger side door and passenger side Recaro. Uh, not a lot of adjustment in these seats. You don't get any lumbar or bolstering, but you do get um, fore, aft, and then as well as reclining, and the headrest goes up and down. So, one of my least favorite features in the car is the armrest. So we'll pop it open here. That's where your USB is kept, SD cards, it's all kept in there. Extra camera mount if you're busy doing filming like me, as well as your line in. Now, the reason why I don't like this thing is, well, it's too far back for me to 
use as an armrest. And my hands are on the steering wheel at the three, at the uh, three and nine. As you can see, I'm not remotely close to using it as an armrest. Now for shifting, if I go first, second, um, if I don't watch it, I will nail my funny bone right there. So I've disliked armrests for a long time. So I hope it wants me to. And we'll just turn that back off. Um, so anyway, eh, I knew that was coming. It's kind of a disappointment, but now that I'm used to it being there, I've I've only hit my elbow just a few times, so not a big deal. Two cup holders, lighted ring in the center, and then in the back we have another cup holder in the back seat, and there are the 60-40 folding back seats with headrests. So that pretty much covers the interior. Um, if you do get the optional sunroof, you do have the tilt option as well as slide option here, uh, map lights, uh, microphone for the sync system for voice commands and phone, as well as the mirror, which oddly enough is not self-dimming like it is in my 2011. So anyway, there you go. That pretty much covers the um, interior of the 2011 Ford Fiesta ST. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, 